Hey guys, welcome back. Chris here with Marksman Shooting Sports and WeBuyGuns.com in Westfield, Indiana, and you are watching Marksman TV. Today I have a top five video, the top five AKs that I recommend in 2023. So if that sounds interesting to you, please stick around. That's coming up now. All right, guys, first up on the table and in no particular order, we have a Romanian Wasser 10. And these are manufactured by Kugir in Romania and imported by Century Arms International here in the United States. Now, these have been a staple in the AK market for the better part of two decades, first hitting their start in about 1997 as the WUM pattern of rifle. Now, all of us remember that between 1994 and 2004, we had the assault weapons ban, in which case modern sporting rifles like these could not have so-called scary features such as traditional stocks, uh, threaded muzzles and bayonet lugs. So the one series had a thumb hole stock, did not have the bayonet lug, did not have the threaded muzzle or the muzzle device attached. Now that would continue up until about, as I mentioned, 2004, when now the rifles could have these features on them because the assault weapons ban had sunset and expired. So they would come out with the GP Wasser 10, GP standing for general purpose. This is when they would go back to the traditional pistol grip and stock configuration, adding the bayonet lug and the threaded muzzle with muzzle device. They also had the GP Wasser 1063, the 1063 being built off of mostly surplus military parts from Romanian AK rifles other than the receivers and barrels, which were brand new. Now, these are still manufactured and imported into the United States today, still manufactured in Romania, and I personally put a lot of weight on foreign manufactured and imported AKs, especially coming out of arms plants that have been making actual military variants of the same rifle for decades, just like Kugir in Romania. So for what you get, it is an excellent rifle. Now, back 10, 15 years ago, these things were very inexpensive, four or $500 brand new. Ever since then, they have crept up to about $900 on the market today. Like most other things, they've gone up in value. Uh, used, you should be able to find one between about six and $800, uh, six and $800 depending on condition. So again, for the money and for the quality and for what you're getting, really nice rifles. Now, these had a bad rap between about 2008 and 2012 uh, due to QC issues. And because of that, there's still a lot of banter out there on the internet about canted sites and things like that. A lot of that has been attributed to the massive uh, surge in demand due to the 2008 uh, presidential election here in the United States, which Barack Obama won. It caused a huge demand for these rifles, so Cougar started churning them out as quickly as they could, and yes, there were some QC issues, but since about 2012, those have been pretty much taken care of, and you typically see I uh, typically do not see, excuse me, QC issues such as canned sights or misaligned gas tubes or anything like that on these rifles today. So I strongly recommend them as a as a one and done AK if you just want one AK for your collection or if you're putting together an AK, a Wasser 10 has to be somewhere in that collection. So that is starting off this video. All right, guys, up next is a personal favorite of mine. This is a Yugoslavian Zestava ZPAP M70, and this is based off of the original military rifle, the M70 which went into development in Yugoslavia in the 1960s and was formally adopted in 1970, as the name would suggest. It was a very close, non-licensed copy of the Russian Type 3 AK pattern. Now, these are very interesting rifles, and I particularly like these because they are a little bit different from the other AKMs you're going to find on the market today. First of all, in Yugoslavia, one of the things they wanted these to accomplish is they wanted to be able to launch grenades off of the front instead of having an under barrel mounted system like everybody else. Because of that, they made a lot of design changes to the rifle. Now, I know as civilians, we're not going to be doing a lot of shooting grenades off the front of the AK, but because of the design changes, you get a lot of reinforcement and added rigidity into the platform that I really like. First of all, they elongated the gas system, so you're going to see three vent holes here, so the handguards are not interchangeable with any other AKM pattern, which typically has two and a little bit shorter. Second, on later variations, they will go to a 1.5 millimeter thick receiver with a bulged RPK style trunnion. This is a very reinforced, very durable receiver, of course, when we're talking AKM, and that's stamped receiver, as opposed to an AK-47 pattern or the milled receiver. So for a stamped AK receiver, which is typically a little bit less expensive than a milled receiver AK, uh, these are very, very strong and robust. Also, because of that back pressure coming from using grenades launched off the front of the barrel, they put a locking, uh, what do you want to call it, a little locking button here on the back that reinforces the top cover so the top cover doesn't blow off under all that uh, back pressure. So you have a reinforced top cover on these rifles as well. So a lot of attention was paid to the reinforcement of the strength of the rifle so you could really feel that when you pick these up. 
Now, if we look at the commercial versions such as this, EAA would start bringing these into the United States in the 1990s. Now, shortly after that, Century Arms would take over importation and Century imported a bulk of the M70s that are in the country today. And then recently, a few years ago, Zestava opened up a importation branch of their company here in the United States called Zestava USA, and they now bring in their own AKs that are still manufactured in current day Serbia by Zestava, brought over into the United States for importation, and that is where uh, where they're brought in today. Now, the second generation of the PAP rifles, and PAP is the designation that Zestava gave to their civilian semi-automatic versions of the AKM. Uh, the second generation was the NPAP, and that was built on a one millimeter thick receiver like every other traditional AKM you find, like the Wasser 10 we just took a look at. The OPAP is when they moved to the 1.5 millimeter with the bulged RPK style trunnion. And then the ZPAP was nomenclature given to the rifle after the Stava USA was established and started bringing them in. So the ZPAP is the so-called fourth generation or the newest generation like this, which has all those reinforced elements I talked about, the 1.5 millimeter thick receiver, the bulged RBK style trunnion, very nice now wood on this, a really nice walnut wood on this one. It's beautiful looking, very well built rifles and foreign manufacturers which you guys are gonna notice is a theme for me. I really like the foreign made AKs made by companies who have been building these things to withstand arduous you know, battle conditions and heavy use, which far exceeds what us as civilians will typically put these through. But I like the overbuilt nature of these rifles and the history associated with them. On the market today, you can pick up one of these things new for about $1,000 to $1,200 or so, depending on configuration. They make them in the wood stocks and the polymer, polymer stocks, and they make them in 5.56 and 7.62 by 39. So there's a lot of different options they have. And then they have the uh, designated marksman variants in the 7.62 by 54R and the 308 and stuff like that. Used, you should be able to find them in the $800 to $900 range, depending on condition and what they come with. So again, uh, for just under $1,000, a nice quality used Yugoslavian AK. I definitely recommend them. They are really, really cool, really nice, and again, a little bit different and very beefy AKs that I definitely think that you should consider if you're thinking about adding another to your collection or if you just want that one and done AK to represent AKs in your otherwise diverse rifle collection. All right, next up is probably one of the most respected AKs in this video. This is the Arsenal CM7. This is the R version with the fixed stock. Now these are manufactured at the Circle 10 plant in Bulgaria. So again, going along with the theme so far is I really like AKs that are manufactured by military arms manufacturers abroad who make stuff that is in line with their military counterparts just for the civilian market and imported here into the United States, and this is no exception. Now, at the Circle 10 plant, that is where they manufacture the ARM-9F for Bulgarian military service, of which these rifles are derived. Now, as I mentioned, this is the SAM series. The SAM series is their milled receiver series, of which most people, when they think of Arsenal, that's what they go for, is the SAM milled receiver AKs. Now, what I showed you so far are technically AKMs. Those are stamped receiver AKs. This one is milled, and the quickest way you could pick out a milled receiver AK is these lightning cuts here on the side of the receiver. Now, really, technically, an AK-47 is a milled receiver AK like this. A stamped receiver, as I mentioned, is an AKM. Now, Arsenal does manufacture the SLR series, which is a milled receiver AKM at a little bit of a cheaper price, but still at that nice higher quality. But again, most people, when they go Arsenal, they go milled receiver CM series. Now, as mentioned, again, this is an R with the fixed stock. They do make them in a side fold with the uh, iconic tube style side folding stock. That is known as the SF. And they make an underfolder version as well, known as the UF. Very, very cool rifles. Now, one of the problems though about these is, is the quality is totally there. These things will last forever. They're very well balanced, really well built, really good shooters, but they are pricey. Brand new on the market today, you're between about $1,600 and $1,800 for a new CM7. Use, they maintain a lot of their value between about $1,400 and $1,500 or $1,600, depending on condition and configuration of what it comes with. So they are definitely AKs that hold and maintain their value. Now, if you're okay with saving up the money and spending it on something like this to have just that one AK in your collection. A lot of people will say, just go for the SAM-7. You'll have it forever. You won't regret it. There's something to be said about that. On more of a budget, are you okay with the Wasser or the uh, Zestava M70 ZPAP we just took a look at? Sure. 
is this really worth two uh, M70s or two Wasser 10s? That's really up to you to decide. But if you are somebody who really likes the sort of the ultimate and quality and just the elegance and, and build uh, attention to detail, this is a great one. Again, coming out of the Circle 10 plant with that nice military history attached to it. So one I definitely recommend and definitely had to be on this list. Okay guys, up next on the list is somewhat of a new one for me, and this is one I'm actually happy to add to this list. So I've done these AK uh, top five lists before. I typically try and do one every year because I really am a big fan of the AK market. And one of the things that I would never let happen is an American-made AK making its way onto the list until now. Um, this is a Palmetto State Armory. This is in their 545 by 39, so the AK-74 type pattern. Um, triangle side fold stock. Palmetto State Armory has been building or been tinkering with the AK pattern, the AKMs, for, gosh, I want to say, I should have looked this up exactly, but it's probably been about the last six or seven years that they've been coming out with them. I don't remember when their first completely built AK hit the market, but when it did, like a lot of other American-made AKs, it was kind of a flop. It didn't do very well. It was met with a lot of criticism, but one of the things I like about Palmetto State Armory as opposed to IO or Pioneer or any of them is that when they're met with criticism, they take what the market is telling them and they adapt and they correct and they come out with a better product. And that is what they have done. So really, I think their first introduction into a really good quality AK was with their GF3 series. Now everything, the bolt heads, the trunnions are all uh, fully hammer forged, barrels, hammer forged, chrome line. I believe there is a 760 by 39 is a one and nine twist. Um, really, really well done. A lot of other companies like IO that everybody, you know, everybody loves IO uh, and uh, Pioneer Arms and things like them is in their original rifles. They use cast parts, which do not hold up and tend to wear out very quickly. These are all forged components in these rifles, which is very similar to things like the Wasser 10 and the, uh, the M70 that we looked at and the Arsenal series of AK. Okay, so they're putting out a product that's a lot better quality. Uh, furthermore, I actually went to a range suit shoot with the uh, 2A-EDU, and he had, I believe, what, what was a GF3 uh, Classic Series, which were on sale for like $600 or something. I think they still might be. And uh, we actually did a thousand round test. So I know a thousand rounds out of an AK isn't, you know, exactly a, uh, you know, indicative of how it will serve long term, but just running through a thousand rounds and it probably took about an hour all in. Um, ran like a top. I got some trigger time on it. It shot really well. Um, I've shot one of their other Romanian, uh, you know, the Romy G type kit guns that they've done. Shot really well. Um, I've been really impressed with the quality. We get a lot of these in under, under transfer and we buy them through our website. I get to handle them. Uh, and honestly, just the, the rivets look great. They're just, they really, really have upped their quality. So because a lot of their other foreign counterparts like the Wassers and the M70s have gotten up there in price close to $1,000 new, you know, if the Wasser was still five or 600 bucks, I would say go with one of those over a PSA any day. But these PSAs, especially when they come out on sale, again, they're, they're, they're like basic models are as cheap as $600 and they tend to hover between about 600 and $1,000. They don't tend to go up beyond that unless there's like a bunch of rails and stuff that comes with them. And that run sales often. I'm not, you know, endorsing PSA or anything. I just have been personally very impressed with the quality of their rifles. So uh, I definitely wanted to, for the first time, PSA, congratulations for the first time a USA made AK has allowed its way into my heart. So um, really good quality rifles are hitting a niche in the market that I definitely appreciate offering AKs at an entry level price with really, really good quality. Uh, so anyway, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't add them to this list this year. So there is that PSA, AKs, the G3s, the GF4s, GF5s, and such. All right, last but not least is a rifle that is really cool. This is a Russian SGL-21 imported by Arsenal. Now, many of you around the AK community are probably aware that Russian AKs are not importable into the United States. In fact, the Vepers were banned from importation in 2017, which was the final nail in the coffin of Russian imported AKs at large. And what this has caused, of course, is the demand in Russian AKs to go up. Now, why am I recommending in the fifth spot of this video, an AK that isn't really obtainable anymore except for on the secondary market at a high price tag. Well, I believe when it comes to the utilitarian nature of AKs, the other four that I have presented actually cover the span pretty well. Less expensive like the PSA AKs to more expensive like the arsenals and everything in between. I think any of the other four options are great for the utilitarian purpose of AK purchasing, which I know I do as well. 
But for the fifth spot, I wanted to throw in something there for investment. I know a lot of people hate that I word when it comes to firearm purchasing, but the truth is there are a lot of rare and collectible firearms and a large part of the market of people do like to purchase things that do, uh, that gain in value. And this is definitely one of them. I like to use the Chinese AKs as a basis for comparison. Now, in 1989, the original non-bastardized version of the Chinese AKs from Norinco and Polytech, prior to 1989, they were pretty well abundant on the U.S. commercial market. Although they were often overlooked and people looked at them as kind of cheap Chinese junk, and the AK market at the time was basically reserved for really diehard enthusiasts who really were into the firearm culture. So not too many people owned them or had an interest in them at the time. Now, after 1989, the original 56 S, the S1, S2, S3 variants of those AKs were banned from importation by President Bush Sr. I know in 1990 to 1994, there was the MAC series, but we won't go over that. But what has happened with those pre-89 banned Chinese AKs is they have exploded in value. Going back 30 years, they've gone from where they were around the $400 mark to now they're well over $3,000 in good condition. I know a lot of that's inflation. Now, if we take 30 years and attribute it to this, the last imports of Russian AKs were in 2017, which was about five or six years ago. So there hasn't been, by comparison, a huge amount of time for the, inc the increase in the uh, value of these yet. And if you do add those 30 years to Russian AKs, I'm wondering what the value of these will look like. So, in my opinion, as an investment, the Russian AKs, whether it's the Vepers or the Segas or the Izmash or whatever, um, are a really good uh, investment. On top of that, they are excellent, fantastic, well-built AKs. Remember I talked about the Arsenal SAM series being brand new around the 1800 mark. Well, something like this used goes in between the two and $3,000 mark. So for not a huge amount more, getting in a Russian that's not importable. Plus, you know, I fired this with several others in a recent short I put up. And this one by far was my favorite in terms of its, you know, recoil impulse and everything. It just is very, very smooth and well built. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to take the opportunity to throw this in there uh, sort of as an investment option in this fifth spot. And also get the opportunity to show off a Russian SGL-21, which... I never will miss that opportunity when I have it. So anyway, guys, this one will end up this spot on this video. Well, guys, that is all the time I have for you today on these. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking out this video. If you enjoyed, please let me know by hitting that like button. Please also consider subscribing to my channel and hit that bell notification button so you are aware when we are posting new content. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave you off with that. I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports and WeBuyGuns.com in Westfield, Indiana. You are watching Marksman TV, and I will see you next time.